眼前的坦克在帐篷区来回碾压。那个血淋淋的血，不知道逃的，我的包也没找到。Writing poetry is just like trying to conquer a very huge castle. You are down in the bottom, and you are moving around, and you would say, "Oh, probably I would climb it from here," and then you try, and then probably from that point, probably from this point, and you live years and years, and you might die without knowing how to conquer this castle. غمزة من عينها في العرس وانجن الولد وكأن الأهل والليلة وأكتاف الشباب المستعدين من الأحزان بالدبكة والعمات والخالات والمختار صاروا لا أحد وحده اللويح في منديله يرتج كل الليل والبنت التي خصته بالضوء المصفى أصبحت كل البلد. Murray Bagrati is a wonderful Palestinian poet. He was born in Ramallah, and Ramallah is his city. But he happened to be in university in Cairo. He was about 19 when the Six Days War happened. So he was immediately deprived of a country and couldn't go back there for 30 years. His leather belt hangs on the wall. The pair of shoes he left behind has turned brittle. His white summer shirts still sleep on their shelf. His scattered papers tell her that he will be gone a long time. But she is there, still waiting, and his leather belt is still hanging there. And each time the day ends, she reaches out to touch a naked waist and leans back against the wall. We have an Italian word, stanza, which is a unit of, of many sorts of lyric poems. And it means a room, and it sense, there's this sense of a poem as this safe, contained world which might have different rooms in it. And I, I get a sense so much from your work that because you were unhoused and unhomed so young, poetry has been your home. Um, but how much has the place of your home, the poetry, changed? How have you changed it, the forms of it, the safe places of it? Yeah, I, I, I changed homes. I mean, uh, once I counted them, I think I have lived in uh, 32 houses, 32 flats, in three continents in 30 years. And I had always to leave. In my poetry, I also tried, I think, I wouldn't say 30, but so many words to come about solving the problems of writing a poem. My first book in Arabic appeared in 1972. <coughs> and <clears throat> the movement between forms and musics and forms of music, forms of, uh, I mean, <coughs> the structure and the texture of the poem has been really as if I'm not the same person. And I like this, uh, th this multitude of uh, attempts, I mean, this tumultuous sea of not being able to say, this is the harbor, I stay here, uh, not even for a night. I mean, when I stay in this harbor, I just move my boat again. No matter what form I might choose to write in, what will stay, what is the dominant, permanent line, the only thing is the understatement and the economy. And no bombastic, heroic tone in the poem. No shouting and no oversimplification. Because oversimplification is bad in human relations, in love, in cultures, in war. If you just see things as black and white, then uh, you are among poets like Bush among politicians. <laughs> This book is so full of wisdom about poetry and what it is to be a poet in a homeland that you have lost, a language homeland. And it's, a, it's he's a wonderful poet, and this is a wonderful book. This is from the beginning called The Bridge. It was this wonderful chapter called The Bridge, which has from Jordan to the West Bank. 
and it has so many names. It ha it's called the Bridge of Return by um, the singer Feruz. Yeah. Um, and um, th there are other names for it. Too. The Alembi Bridge because Alembi conquered Palestine through it, and King Hussein Bridge because the Jordanians are fond of their king. Uh, they used to call it uh, the the Bridge of Dignity. Because when they signed Oslo, which, which was totally undignified and scandalously uh, uh, detrimental to our cause, and the results are seen now, they called it dignity. I mean, this is the, I mean, verbicide of, <laughs> of a sort. And then the Palestinian, my, my, my people of my village and, and all the Palestinians would call it simply the bridge. So and so here he names. is, he's finally allowed to step on this bridge that he hasn't been allowed to step on for 30 years. And um, he suddenly hears the singer, Feruz, and, and she's got a song called The Wooden Bridge. Unusually for her, the lyrics of the song are more direct than one would wish. How have they settled in the hearts of intellectuals and peasants and students and soldiers and aunts and revolutionaries? Is it people's need to have their voice heard through listening to it from the mouth of another? The silent ones appoint the speakers to deputise for them. People like direct poetry only in times of injustice, times of communal silence, times when they are unable to speak or to act. Poetry that whispers and suggests can only be felt by free men. Yes. Under dictatorship, you have to whisper. But under military occupation, your people would like you to be the strong fighter and their spokesman and they expect you to say what is in their mind. And then there's no chance for poetry to be poetry if you just give the people their expectation. In all just causes, beauty is resistance. Because an ugly poem, even if it is patriotic and uh, anti-imperialist, and if the, an ugly poem, a bad poem, is also bad for the cause. It's also fine to die in our beds on a clean pillow and among our friends. It's fine to die once, our hands crossed on our chests, empty and pale, with no scratches, no chains, no banners, and no petitions. It's fine to have an undusty death, no holes in our shirts, and no evidence in our ribs. It's fine to die with a white pillow, not the pavement, under our cheeks, our hands resting in those who are loved ones, surrounded by desperate doctors and nurses, with nothing left but a graceful farewell, paying no attention to history, leaving this world as it is, hoping that someday someone else will change it. You've been displaced for so much of your life. You've seen and witnessed so much of this suffering. And you write so powerfully about the, the, the Palestinian cause and so on. Um, how does love and beauty triumph through that? First of all, my, my loss as a Palestinian and my family's loss is very, very, very small, very small uh, uh, in comparison with the loss of other Palestinians. I have just disruption in my family life, some deportation, some uh, short time in prison. Uh, okay, but you know the tragedy is much more. I mean, houses demolished, land confiscated, deaths, massacres uh, for under, under the Israeli military occupation for, for, for decades now. Uh, I never, with this difficulty, personally, I never felt a victim. I never felt weak. When you have this inner belief in the justice of your cause, you are not allowed to feel victimized, no. And if you feel positive, then you can observe where love comes. You can read the eyes of a partner, you can read the silence of a partner. Then you, when you are attentive to the others, you are loved and you can love. Because, I mean, love is all about being attentive, being able to see, able to feel. And we never lost this after 60 years of losing our country and after many years of occupation and with all this injustice around us. We still can observe and see and feel and make ourselves uh, 
comfortable in our skin.